Welcome everyone to this Fedora Classroom session. Um, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one session, which means we'll touch upon all the basics without going into too many details. Um, it is strictly an hour. Unfortunately, we have work meetings after the hour, uh, but you can continue asking us questions on the different channels afterwards. Um, so ideally what this session will tell you is um, what an RPM package is, how you can extract information about your RPM packages, metadata, and so on. And of course, we'll then go through the pipeline to construct an RPM package. Um, depending on how much time we have at the end, we will also try and give you a quick overview of um, how these packages are built in the Fedora pipeline. So from a package maintainer, including a new piece of software in Fedora to how it gets to the repositories uh, so that you can install it on your computers using either DNF or uh, in some cases, GNOME software. Right, um, so I'm going to switch to my terminal. Um, the session is meant to be hands-on, which means I will show you commands and I will put them in the chat. You don't have to use them, but uh, if you follow along and run the commands on your system as well, it will give you a much better idea of how things work. Okay, so let's... Okay, um, I do hope everybody can see my terminal now. Uh, I've switched there and I've got the chat open in a different window. Um, if you have questions, please raise your hands or put them in the chat and um, I'll keep answering them uh, when I break. Okay, so we're in the terminal now. As you can see, I've created a new uh, directory for this, which I suggest everybody should do um, just so that it'll keep your computer clean. Right, um, so first of all, let's have a look at a package that everybody should have um, on Fedora already, right? So most of you have used the fpaste tool, which is quite an easy tool for you to gather some system information and share it uh, on the Fedora paste bin. So for example, if you do this, um, before I go any further, is the font large enough? Can everybody read the command? Okay, that's great. So, so for example, if you run f paste double dash this info, which I'll put in the chat for you now, right? What you what you'll see is that it gathers a lot of system information and then it'll return you a link, right? And the link is a link on the Fedora paste bin, which gathers uh, lots of information about your system, and we use this to debug issues, right? So for example, if you've ever been to one of our support channels, somebody may have asked you to provide the output of FPSIS info, right? So it gives you information about the release, uh, what desktop environment you're, you're running, your SE Linux status, um, some information about your hardware, what processes are running, um, your PCI devices, and so on, um, some kernel messages, the, the most recent ones, all your repositories, which come in quite handy when you're debugging issues, and then, you know, more information about your packages and so on. Um, recently, uh, we've also added a BT, a flag for uh, ButterFS because a lot of people are now on a new file system. So it can also give you information on that, right? Um, and fpaste um, is included by default um, in Fedora installations in pretty much all the standard installations, all the spins. Um, I also believe it's on the server and so on, right? And what fpaste effectively is, is one file. So if you run which fpaste, you'll see that one file in user bin. That's all it is, right? So um, most of you will know this, but I'll cover this anyway. If you do rpm minus q fpaste, right, that is query the rpm database, you should find out what version of fpaste you're on. Um, if you add some more flags to query, you can see more information about fpaste, right? So I stands for information. And what this will show you is, what this will show you is uh, a short output with the various metadata tags, right? So what the name of this package is, what version do you have right now? What release is this? Um, if you're in Fedora 33, this will be FC 33 at the end. The architecture, um, fpaste is a pure Python file, right? Which means it's portable and does not depend on the architecture. So the tag for that is no arch, right? Which means it can run on, on all the arch of the Fedora supports. 
Um, then you get installation date, uh, the size of your package, the license, which of course in Fedora is very important, right? Since we want to use free and open source software. Um, and then it'll give you some more information about the build, right? So what the source RPM is, we'll cover this later. Um, packager vendor, these are all standard fields. Uh, Fedora is a packager, right? Because you've got it from your repositories. Um, and then there's more information. So for example, the upstream, this is where we develop F-based on, on Pagger. And then if you want to file bugs, you can use this URL here. And then you have a summary, which tells you what the tool does in short and a much longer description. Okay, so this is how you can query RPM about a package that is, that is already installed, right? And all of this information is included in the RPM that you've installed, all right? So an RPM, uh, and we can see this, So if you use the L flag along, along with Q, Q is for query, L is for list, it will tell you all the files that were included in this RPM, right? So you've got your FPS script, you've got some quick documentation, you've got the man page, and you've got the license file. So this is what me as the package maintainer for FPS included in the FPS package, all right? So in short, an RPM is a compressed archive, right? It's it's not a zip file, it uses a different algorithm. I think nowadays we use XZ, but it is a compressed file which includes all of these files along with some metadata, right? The metadata that you were able to query. And this metadata includes all of the tags and information about what files are included in CRPM, right? And this is how RPM on your system will construct a database. And when you run all of these um, commands, the query commands, all of this information comes from the, the RPM database, right? Because I don't have, this directory is completely empty. I don't have the RPM file here with me. So all of this information is included in the RPM, and when you install the RPM, it gets pulled into the RPM database to allow you to query these things. Now, RPM is only for your local systems, right? So if I want to get some information from the repositories, I cannot use RPM. Right? RPM does not know about repositories. RPM only knows about RPM packages. If I want to get information from the repositories, then we need to use DNF, right? which knows about all the federal repositories. So if you want to get information of F-based, you will use DNF info. Right? You don't have to use sudo here. I, I use it because that way it always uses the system cache. Right. So now this information is not coming from the local, uh, well, it's a combination. It's coming from the local uh, RPM database, but it's also using the repo, right? But if it's a package that I don't have on my system, RPM will be unable to help me. Um, will somebody give me a random package name, which I will unlike, which I will probably not have on my system? Ripple, any ideas? Okay. Let's go with Sway because it's quite popular nowadays. There we go. Right, so I do not have Sway on my system at all, right? You can see it's not installed, but I can do, right? So now you see the distinction. DNF gives you, um... yeah, so uh, to answer your question, ED LER 88, it will tell you, um, Everything that's included, all the files and directory structure from your package will be, which, which, uh, which sorry, will be listed when you do RPM minus QL. Okay. Um, you can also do this using DNF actually. So you can do repo query, right? So if you want to look at what files are included in a package that you do not have installed, you can use DNF repo query, right? So. Make that clearer, let's have a look at what Sway includes. And these are all the files that are included in the Sway package, all right? So you have configuration files, you have your binaries, right? You have some debug information, you've got your backgrounds, you've got various completion scripts for bash and fish. Uh, and then you've got your licenses, and of course your man pages documentation and so on, right? So this is how you can get information about packages that you don't have in your system. Okay, um, 
there's a lot more you can do with uh, DNF. So, so um, if you look at what, right, I'm I'm using bat. If you don't have bat installed, you can install it using all that, right? Um, it's it's cat with um, more features, pretty much. Right, so if I do this, now we're looking at the FPS script. Okay, so so you could you can also use cat, you can use more, you can use less, you can use tail, right? Um, but what you see on top of the file is that it has what in Linux jargon we call a shebang, right? A shebang tells the, the shell what well program should be used to run the script. Okay, uh, and as you can see, FPS is a pure Python script. And therefore, we need Python 3 installed, right? So in order to run FPS, we need Python 3 installed. Uh, and let's do this. So now what I'm querying is, I'm running RPM, I'm querying RPM, and I'm asking RPM, what does FPS need to run, right? That is what requires does. So if you want to run this in your own terminal, there's a command. Right, and what you see here is that it includes this extra information that FPS, this package, requires Python 3 to run. Right, what this means is when you do DNF install FPS, DNF will then go through the list of requirements for FPS and also install all of these. Right, this is why DNF does dependency resolution. All of this information is again included in your RPM. Okay, so that is requires. Now, all of this is more from a usage perspective. So what information do you need to inspect a package to see what it requires? Um, and we, um, as package maintainers, this is our responsibility to make sure that all the requires of a package are correct. Uh, we have lots of checks uh, in the build system, which I'll try and show you at the end, which check to see if a package installs correctly or if there's something wrong with its requires, right? But again, all of this information is included in your RPM itself, right? So it's a self-contained archive of files and metadata that are required to uh, install or remove or upgrade uh, the package and so on, all right? Um, let's take a two-minute break here. Uh, does anybody have, a, have any questions so far? Please put them in the chat. Yeah, I'll give it another minute and then we'll move on. Ed, um, so the most common uh, reason is that it needs to update the metadata, right? So. Um, uh, if your metadata for DNF is not uh, well, is not up to date, it will contact your repositories and fetch it again. So that is one reason for DNF taking some time. Uh, the other reason is dependency resolution. So depending on how many packages there are in a transaction, uh, DNF does the math under the hood to see what else is required to complete the transaction correctly. All right, so that may take some time. But um, if you think uh, DNF will use quite slow, it's best to file a bug and uh, the developers can then have a look and see where there might be some optimization opportunities. Taptashi, uh, yes. So uh, all your RPM commands are for packages that are either installed in your system, so it can use the database, or if you have the RPM file, right? If you, have, if you do not have the RPM file and it's not installed in your system, then you use DNF. Um, tell Nama, yes. Um, so along with requires, um, you can also see what um, capabilities, right, a package has. So for example, if you run, if you replace requires with provides, for FPS, you'll see that it provides this package with this version. Um, 
if you want to have a look at, um, so you can do something like this. Right, um, I don't want to write FPS because I don't think anything in the repos requires FPS, but let's, 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 let's try open three and see. This is, this is probably going to give us a very long list. Right, so all of these packages will have Python 3 listed as um, requires. Um, well, as expected, it did not disappoint. Um, the whole Python package that requires Python 3. Right, so this is... Uh, the loudspeaker, well, provides... I use the word capability because it's not necessarily just uh, the final binary, right? So um, if I, let's see, uh, so if I do, right, so this was for glibc, and so this will tell you that um, it provides the glibc package, this particular version, but then all of the libraries that are included in glibc will also be listed here, right? So that is why we say um, capabilities rather than a file, right? Um, right, so for example here, you can see that the Fedora Packager package provides some configuration here, config, right? Um, if you look at requires, you'll see that it pulls in various things that we need for building RPMs. That's why we asked you to install Fedora Packager. Um, and um, tell them, I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to look at the man page for Repo Query. I, I think, um, as the name suggests, it is meant to look at uh, the complete repository. Um, it may be, Subtashi, that's called a shebang. You can look that up online. Um, what's interesting about Fedora Packager is, uh, yeah, it's more of a meta package. It just installed other things. Uh, okay, Vipul, sorry, I'll keep that uh, in mind. Okay, so I think we've done kind of user-facing bits. Let's um, let's have a look at how FPS is packaged. So, your first link is right. So we're now looking at uh, the the sources that are used to build all the packages in the Fedora ecosystem, right? So so we call it source.fedoraproject.org. And all RPMs are under the RPM namespace. Um, and now we also have containers and so on. So there's a different namespace for containers. There's a different namespace for modules. modules. Right, but if you go right, here, you, go here um, you can look at, you can look at, so I'm getting some feedback. Somebody's mic on. Thanks. Right, so if you look at the Fedora package sources, this is where we package maintainers store all the information required to build our packages. Okay, so so this is the one for FPaste. As you see, I am the maintainer for FPaste. Um, if you click on files, you can look at the spec file, all right? And now if you look at the spec file, you'll notice that all of this information is what you had seen when we had run RPM QI on FPaste, right? It had given us a name, version, license information, the URL, Right, so all of these are metadata tags that we use to provide information to RPM about the package, okay? And then, um, as we saw, FPaste is pretty much, well, one, one Python script along with some more information. If you skip all of the bits in, in between and come down to the file section, right, you'll see that we have bin dir is a macro or the binary directory, which 
uh, on Fedora expands to user bin, right? So this is how we put user bin and the name here is fpaste. Uh, we saw that in documentation for fpaste, we had the readme. Let me actually do. Right, so on the left, I'm going to show you the output of a few commands. Right, and then we can compare them to the spec file, right? So if you look at the top bits, name, version, release, all of this comes from here in the spec file. Right, the description is here too. Yeah, uh, bin DIR does mean user bin, yes. Um, I'll, uh, there's a list of all macros that we defined for Fedora. I'll give you a link later when we get to uh, that bit. Yeah, and then if you come down to the file section, right, you can see so bin dir here goes to user bin, right? The doc macro expands to user shared doc and the name of the package. So you can see that here. And you can see I've included the readme file and the to-do file, and you can see both of them listed here, right? Uh, similarly, the license macro expands to user share license and package name. And you can see that the copying file from my spec comes down to user share licenses as paste copying over here. Uh, and finally, if you look at the man page, the man DIR is another macro. Maybe the, uh, the, so the to-do file, the question here is what is a to-do file? The to-do file is um, a list of features we want in FPaste, right? It's not something users need to look at, but we leave it there in case users are wondering what more um, uh, features and bug fixes and so on are sort of in the pipeline. Um, that is pretty much, um, the maintainer's decision, right? What extra files they want to include in the package. Uh, so yeah, and finally, you look at man DIR, which expands to user share man, okay? And then we want this to be in section one of the man pages, so that's man one, um, and then we have the man page, right? Um, to learn more about sections, to learn more about the file system hierarchy, you should try reading the man page for hierarchy, that's man hier, H-I-E-R, all right? This will explain to you uh, the standard directories where we place files and why. Um, there's something else I wanted to tell you, uh, yeah. Uh, and of course, man itself has a man page, right? So you can read through that. Um, it'll tell you why the different sections. So for example, Section one is executable programs or shell commands, and so on and so forth, okay? Okay, so now we know uh, where the metadata goes and we know how the files are specified, right? Now there's some stuff in the middle, C3 sections. You can see the prep section, which is short for preparation. Well, I'm not sure about that, but I would assume that's it. There's the build section and there's the install section, right? So to do this, we're going to clone, right? So um, because the Fedora package sources are, so this is a pager instance, a pega instance rather, right? So you can see how you can clone the repositories. If you have Fed package installed in your system, you should be able to clone the repository using Fed package. Right, uh, I think this applies if you have a Fedora account. If you don't have a Fedora account, I believe you need to use the anonymous flag holder. Uh, one off. Yeah, give me a minute. We have. Uh... Right, so if you don't have a Fedora account, use this. And this is the link. Uh, Joe, the session is being recorded. Mandy, no, um, I'll discuss that more in detail, but Fed package is, um, um, it does a lot more than just clone the repository, right? Because you can technically clone the repository just with the clone. But um, again, 
we have threat packet installed. The easiest thing to do is read the man page. Right, and that will tell you everything that threat package can do. Okay. But anyway, so let's clone um, the repository. Right. So I've got now an F based repository. If I enter this, you'll see the same the same files that we saw here. Right. Uh, and you also have a git ignore file, it's just a hidden file, right? So you can use ls with h and so on to, well, uh, with la rather, to look at your hidden files in the directory. Now let's expand this. Now, um, the same file, I've just opened it locally on my system. Um, I'll wait a minute for everybody to clone and open the file and have a quick look at it. Um, any questions uh, in the in the second part of session yet? Diago, you'll have to use the anonymous uh, clone. So that'll be for you. It'll be that package. Yeah. What? Um, on what I've just said. Um, to create a Fedora account, you go to accounts that dot. Uh, where is? Um, if you have an account, make sure you've logged into uh, source to Fedora project raw once, so it can create a profile for you. Miguel, I'll talk about how we can uh, how you can join up and contribute. Right. Yeah. So the question is, what is uh, if you're packaging something from scratch? Yeah. So you get the source code from upstream, and then you write a spec file. From zero, right? So um, I'll cover some of that. I won't cover all of it. Um, okay. Um, I'm assuming people have the repository clone. So here's what else that package can do for you. If you write fet package sources, it'll fetch the source code for f paste. So then you should have f paste the tar file that I used to make releases. Um, and then if you extract this, right, if you extract this, you'll then have uh, the f paste source folder. And of course, if you go inside the source folder, you'll find the source code of the package, right? You can do this for any package. So you can clone any repository and use fed package sources. Mandy, it depends. If you wanted to access the f based source code, that's on Paga. For that, um, I think you can use HTTPS. To read any of this, you do not need SSH keys, right? All of this is open source. Um, you can access all of this information without um, SSH keys, right? The difference is that, so for example, Right, so let's see. So this is where the sources of FPaste are, right? And you can clone, right? If you log in and have an account, it might it'll give you some more options also. Okay, so then you get more options. Uh, the SSH will only work if you have an SSH key, as far as I know. If you do not have an SSH key uh, uploaded to, to Pagger, then you'll have to use HTTPS, right? Okay, anyway. Um, so now let's, we're looking at the source code for F-based, all right? Now this is where uh, packaging requires a little knowledge about the tool that you're trying to package, right? You need to know 
um, how the source code is organized, and you need to know where different files have to be installed, right? That is how we'll populate the files system, the files section of your spec file. So I've started with FPS because it's a very, very simple one, all right? So for example, here you can see that there is the fpaste.py script, right? There's a readme and to-do files, write, uh, we call this the root of the folder, okay? Uh, the change log and copying also in the root of the folder. And finally, if you look at docs, right? You've got a man page inside uh, the docs folder. Um, so that's docs slash man for manual slash en for the language because you can translate your man pages into different languages if you want. Right. Now the exercise of this RPM is to take these files, right, and put them in the right place on your local system. Okay, that is all uh, the spec file is telling the RPM, right? Right, so if you look at the spec file again, And I'm going to terminal so that right, so yeah, I'm Okay, so on the right hand side, you're looking at the source code for fpaste, right? And on the left hand side, you're looking at my spec file. Now, when we define the source code at source zero over here, that tells RPM where your source code is, right? And as you see, <clears throat> it's a URL. And at the end, it expands to name version tar.gz, which on the right hand side you'll see expands to fpaste dash 0.4.2.0.tar.gz. Uh, so the source file here is telling RPM this is the file that needs to be included here, that needs to be used to generate my build. Okay. After we have more metadata, when you come to the prep section, what the prep section does is it tells RPM different steps to take to prepare the source code for the next steps. Mainly that's because you're looking at the source code for fpaste, you're not looking at the RPM source code, right? So there are two different levels. The source code for the software is different, that comes from the upstream developers, and the spec file and the sources that are used to build the RPM are in Fedora infrastructure, right? So they're two different repositories, okay? Okay. So what uh, so what the prep section is doing here, in this case, it's all it's doing is it's extracting this tar, right? The way we did manually. Because before you access its files, you need to extract this, right? Um, FPS is very simple. We don't have anything to build in here. But um, if you have used tools, for example, that are written in C or C++, you generally have to run configure, make, and make install, right? So all of that would go in this build section, okay? I'll show you a more complex spec, which has some of that too, uh, in a bit. And finally, the install section is where you tell RPM where your files have to be installed, right? So as you can see here, I'm creating a new directory. I'm creating bin dir, which we now know is user bin. And I'm running make install in this, the build section. And if you look at the make file for fpaste, it's a very, very simple make file. And all it does is it puts the fpaste script in its right place, right? And it installs uh, the man page in the right place. That's all it does, okay? It doesn't do much. Um, and what's interesting here to see is uh, these are some make file specifics, which you won't go into much now. But if you look on the left in my spec, I've said bin dir equals something something, okay? And when we run make, make replaces 
pin dir in my make file with that value. Okay, so it's, it's just think of it as replacement. Similarly, for man dir, which I define here, my make file will replace that in here. Uh, one thing to note here is a special macro called build root. So when, if you build some software from source, you want to make sure that A, it doesn't pollute your home directory, and B, whatever you have installed on your system currently does not affect the build, right? So what RPM does is it creates a new build root, right? Think of it as a different isolated file, file structure, right? So um, when you're installing in bin, in bin DIR, it's not actually installing in user bin because we don't want to dirty your system, right? It creates a different, um, a different file uh, system structure and creates a bin DIR over there, okay? So everything we do is relative to this newly created build root. Okay, so any questions so far? Otherwise, we'll build a paste again and see how that looks. So Ed, um, there are different kinds of macros. All of these macros, uh, the location macros are in the guidelines, but then each, um, the language specific guidelines. So for example, the Python macros will be defined in the Python guidelines. Uh, the Java macros will be defined in the Java guidelines because the maintainers, uh, Saptarshi, that is that doesn't actually exist in the file. That's only in my editor to show me where the line ends, right? The dollar sign at the end of the line. Uh, if you open the file on, um, um, in your browser in uh, on source.fedorproject.org, you'll see that the dollar sign isn't there at the end. Okay, fine. So let's uh, Okay, so I'm going to restore this file because I don't want to make any changes to it at the moment. Um now And auto setup is a, a slightly advanced version of uh, setup. That's that's not quite federal specific. That's RPM specific. So um, its documentation lies in the RPM documentation. But Ed had asked if uh, where the explanation for the auto setup macro is given. Okay. Right. So now, in order to build your RPM, we need to use the RPM build tool. Yeah. Okay? So. Generally, your command is RPM BA, which means build all, and then your spec file. But we're going to do this in two steps because we want to show you what a source RPM is. So first, I'm going to run RPM BS, that's build source. Okay, and very quickly, um, it gives me an output. What one should notice here is that this is a source RPM, right? It's src.rpm. It's not your final binary RPM, right? We've got a new file here called the source RPM. Um, what you'll also see now is that it's created new folders in my um, in my fbase folder for the build root, right? There's another folder for build, and this is, there's another folder for RPMs. RPMs are where the finally generated RPMs will go. Build root is the alternative directory structure that RPM creates for us. Build is a temporary directory where whatever needs building, right? For example, when you run configure, make, make, install, all of that will happen in build. Okay. Now, the idea here is that your source RPM includes uh, all your sources. So this includes the tar file for fpaste. It will include the spec file and a lot, uh, quite a few packages will have multiple sources, right? So you may have one tar, but there might be other external files that you want to include in the RPM. Um, all the patches that we carry, I haven't shown you any here, but any patches that you carry, so basically everything that's required to build the RPM needs to be included in your source RPM, right? Um, it is another, um, uh, loudspeaker, that's because you don't have the tar so the loudspeakers asked, um, they're getting an error where they can't find um, fpaste. 
Ah, uh, right. That's because um, okay. I'll, I'll I'll discuss that later. So the difference is that uh, my system is now set up to pick up sources from the current directory, whereas you're still using the default system, um, which has a different uh, directory structure. Um, let's see. I think that might be a problem. So. But um, if you want to be able to uh, run the commands that I'm running exactly, uh, please go to this link on pastecentos.org, download the file as a raw file, and place it in your home directory as a hidden file as .rpm macros. Right. All it's really doing is it's, it's telling um, RPM build to use my current directory for all of this rather than look elsewhere. Okay. Um, all right, we only have 10 minutes left, so I'm going to go through this rather quickly, unfortunately. Um, okay, so now we have RPM BS. And to build your RPM, you'll go Okay. Um, right. I seem to have done something wrong here. Let's have a look. Okay, I seem to have run into some sort of bug, which I'm not sure about. So we'll skip that for the moment. Uh, Jose, yeah, that's where it'll go. Okay, so in an ideal world, if I hadn't run into a bug, this is how you'd build your RPM. Uh, the requirement here is that because you're building RP using RPM, which has no idea about all your repositories, everything that's required to build your RPM needs to be on your local system. Um, Ed, no, there isn't at the moment. Well, at least I'm not aware. So Ed asks, is an XDG-based direct directory compliant location? Um, no, I'm not aware of one. Um, Jose, make sure you download the raw version of the file. Otherwise, um, if you download the HTML version, that won't work. Okay. Um, and now, to give you a quick walkthrough of Fed package, right? So instead of using RPM build, what I can do now is use Fed package, right? Let's quickly look at the man page to see what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to build a local build, right? So we can search the man page for local, and there you go, right? The Fed package local will build a local RPM build test. Let's try it out. Right, so as you can see, I get the same error as I got with RPM build, which means Fed package and literally just calling RPM build under the hood, right? Um, okay. Whipple, what do you suggest I should cover in the remaining five minutes? I thought I'd do mock, but I think we don't have enough time for mock. Yeah, maybe we can open up for more people to discuss certain some questions if they have from what we have talked now in five minutes. Yeah, um, yeah, I think I think that's the best idea, and uh, we can do um, a one or two session later where we assume that yeah. all of this has been covered, and then we do. Um, yeah. Okay, so we um, can use this recording as prerequisite for the next time, and yeah, then we can make a continuation of it. Okay. So, um, so Robbie here has asked, how do you join as package maintainers? Um, right. I, so I think that will what I'll cover at the um, as the last bit. Joe, uh, 
No, because when you think of Fedora, when you think of Fedora source code, um, it's actually many, many different packages that are all installed together to make the operating system. When you're building your RPM, you're not actually touching the, um, you're not actually touching your file system at all over here. That's why it builds a different build route. Okay. But yes, uh, it's good to be careful about it. Um, just to be sure. Right, so um, in the last few minutes, let's have a look at how you can join up to become package maintainers. Um, somebody's already shared the link, right? So this is a page you start with. Um, initially, it'll tell you to create your Bugzilla account, your Fedora account, all of this is required to access the infrastructure. Um, somebody has asked, where can I access the recording? Uh, the recording will be made available um, after the session, uh, we'll try and update the Federal Magazine post with the information. Yeah, okay, it also um, will be on YouTube. Uh, we'll share it via Twitter and Magazine post comments. Okay, um, yeah, then you should join the mailing list because it's quite important that you're part of the community. Uh, you need to set up Git. I think most people should have that set up already. Uh, you need to install Fedora Packager, which we installed for this session. Right. Now, the first step is, of course, to find something that you want to include in Fedora. Right. Um, you need to download the source code, and you need to be able to build it from source on your own. Right. So the first step is to figure out how something builds. Um, as you saw in the spec file, it is literally a set of instructions on how to build it. So if you can build something from source on your system, it is generally likely that you will be able to put those instructions into your spec file, right, to build it there. Um, the first step after you've managed to build your RPM is that you need to file a review request, right? So Fedora follows a peer review model when, um, when it comes to packages. Um, so if, if I package something up, I'll file a review request, and then somebody else from the community, another, another Fedora packager, will review my package to make sure that it, com it complies with the federal guidelines, right? So this way we, we help each other. Um, um, if you are on the devil list, on the developers list, you'll see that a lot of times we ask for review swaps, which means I've got this new package I need reviewed. Um, uh, no, honor up, any, any package maintainer can do reviews. Proven packages are different, right? All package maintainers, uh, can review other people's packages, right? And it's encouraged. So the idea is that I have a new package that I want reviewed. Um, Mandy, I think uh, some of your questions are probably slightly out of scope. Uh, we'll answer them on a discussion topic, perhaps. Okay, sorry. Okay, so for example, I can show you a review request. Let's see what I have. Once. So this, okay, so the link is there. Um, I'm looking at, there's also a review, package review status tracker. So have a look at this, right? So it lists uh, packages that are waiting for review, packages uh, that are in progress and so on and so forth. So you can go there and look for different packages and see if there's something you want to review. Um, What you're seeing now is an example um, review request. Uh, you can see Anil had, had filed this review as the maintainer. I, it was assigned to me, so I was doing the reviewing. You see we upload the spec and the source RPM because as the reviewer, I need to be able to rebuild this and test it out. And then a review is basically a discussion and back and forth of issues uh, that need to be fixed. So for example, you can see I've given a long list of issues here. Then Anil's made some changes to it and corrected these issues. Uh, then I go on and make give some more comments and so on and so forth. 
Um, at the end of this, the package will be approved, okay? which is very odd because I thought we had, oh, there we go. But the, the ideal scenario to make sure your review continues to be reviewed is to email on the devil list, right? Because all us package maintainers will be looking at the devil list. Um, if it gets stalled, um, what you can do is you can set the need info flag, which will send reminders. Um, if the reviewer is stalled, uh, it's best to wait uh, for some amount of time before while well, asking somebody else to take over. If the person that submitted the review has um, stalled, then unfortunately there's not much you can do, right? Um, because they need to make the changes required for the package to be accepted. So if somebody submits a package uh, and after a while they stop re replying to review comments, then we end up closing uh, the review ticket as a dead review. Um, and then the idea is that if somebody else wants to package the software, they can come and take on, right? But it depends on which side uh, gets stalled in the review. Yeah. yeah, so this is the review. As you can see, Robert went on and reviewed this for me. There's, a, there's quite a bit checklist, uh, but you can use Fedora review. So if you do, right, and then have a look at what does that does. So it'll run all the basic checks for you. Uh, it's not completely automated. You still have to do some work manually. Um, and then at the end of it, when this gets approved, as you can see here, I file a ticket and a repository is created for me. So if you're looking for Right, so if you look at the commits, you'll see that the first commit comes from somebody from release engineering. The release engineering team takes care of all of this really core infrastructure for us, right? So they create this repository, um, after which I'm able to push my files to it. Right, so it's got the same files. It's got a spec file. Uh, as you see, there are two extra files here which have included the sources. So at this point, your package is in uh, the source repositories, right? Once you've done that, you can then, so this is how you use fed package import, right? That will pull everything from your source RPM onto your repository. Uh, you commit, you push, and then to build your package, you done fed package build. And I can show you the code you build system. Right, so if you go there, you'll see all the builds that I've pushed for, for this particular package, right? Now at this point, you submitted a package, it has been approved, um, right? You've uh, imported it into Fedora, you've built it. The next step is for it to go through the quality assurance system. Right, so the idea of the QA system is, for example, let's look at the first one, right? So we create an update, and it stays in this update for some days and allows people to test this package. Uh, you can look, yeah. Right, so for example, for this package, there wasn't any, there wasn't any negative karma saying that no, it doesn't work, in which case we were able to push it to stable in seven days time, right? When it's pushed to stable, then it ends up in your updates repository and you can install it using DNF. But that's kind of, uh, well, a really, really short world went tour of how to go about this, but all the information you need is on this wiki page. And uh, the best thing to do is to subscribe to the devil list and just ask whatever queries you have, right? All, um, pretty much all package maintainers will hang out there. Uh, the community is extremely helpful. We always want more and more people to join up as, as package maintainers because, uh, quite frankly, we have thousands of packages. Um, and the more package maintainers we have, the more software we'll manage to keep uh, included in Fedora. All right. I think I'm going to close this there because, unfortunately, I need to run off for another meeting. Um, uh, how about this? How about I create a discussion topic on discussion.fedoraproject.org and uh, all of the questions coming in now can go there and then people can discuss and, um, right. 
thanks a lot angur i'll i'll stop recording right now and thanks. if people want to stay back and discuss for a while that's totally all right and we'll also have some following classroom we'll discuss and discuss with angur and more classroom wranglers on when we can organize it and look look forward to the recording it might end up on youtube we'll update the magazine post as angur said